Christian Horner has now made it clear what his plans are for 2025, and that also Kimi Raikkonen could have been a Red Bull driver. Oh, and if you're thinking I'm making that last part up, I am most certainly not, because Christian Horner said so himself on the F1 Nation podcast, and its logo really drives me up the wall in terms of my OCD. The Red Bull team principal made it very clear what he is planning on doing with the likes of Yuki Tsunoda and Checo, saying that they're safe for the time being, but the Red Bull definition of safe is also very vague, so I don't necessarily believe that wholesale. But there were some interesting facts in that podcast, as well as what is going to be happening with Daniel Ricciardo. And let me read to you what he said. Ahem. At the moment, there's only something in place until the end of the season, so there's no thoughts or expectations beyond that. We've loaned him to Alpha Tari to the end of the year, obviously. Uh huh. Our drivers are going to be Max and Checo again next year, but it's always good to have a talent in reserve. Oh yes, of course, in reserve, not using them as some kind of barometer or stick. And by going to Alpha Tauri, I think he sees that as his best route of stating his case for 2025. So okay, that statement got me thinking. It really got me wondering about what the game plan is for Red Bull at the moment, now that they actually have the ideal drivers that they want, and they've gotten rid of the driver that basically was part of some kind of impulsive spur of the moment thing, to broadcast to everyone else and the media that Daniel Ricciardo's not replacing anybody, calm down, he's not going to be making any surprise twists anytime soon. Well, what do you think we saw last week? That was a surprise twist. But in all seriousness, this is just a public relations exercise to assuade any idea that anything else could happen. This is just Christian Horner giving an old mate a drive in a car. You know, give a good old friend a favour. This interview is just giving me really big ideas about what could happen for a Netflix movie about Daniel Ricciardo's career. This would be really good for some kind of sob story and rise to prominence once more. Be very dramatic. Daniel Ricciardo, disillusioned by the rigours of partnering with Max Verstappen, and as well as all of the pitfalls of the Renault engine, sorry, Tag Oya engine, sought to find greener pastures elsewhere at Renault. Hmm. But then McLaren comes a knocking with a chance at something really dazzling after their amazing performance in 2020. But it was clear that all of this was just a big old mismatch and that he had picked the wrong team and now he was left with his thoughts in the wilderness, not sure whether he would actually get a chance to properly sign off his career. But What's that? A friend in Christian Horner, offering a hand to his old friend saying, look what they've done to you, dear Daniel. Here, come with me. We'll give you a proper bed, a chance for you to get back on your feet, and you may return to the Daniel that you once were. The one who would always lick the stamp and send it into corners. Not the one who was flummoxing around at the back of the grid. You can tell that Christian Horner and the Red Bull marketing team are having a field day right now. But let's just get real here. If Daniel Ricciardo wasn't as popular as he is, where he has multiple times more Instagram followers than Alpha Tauri, the team where he's going, would Christian have been as accommodating? Christian does go on to talk about Checo a little bit, not just about Daniel. And the topic of his drive comes up, and the idea of Daniel's vision of getting back into the car for 2025 kind of states to me that I reckon that Checo's time is going to be up after 2024 at the longest. It's very clear that Checo is not going to be getting a contract extension. He'll be very lucky to actually ride out his current contract because no talk of Checo for the long term was brought up. Christian bringing up an actual specific date for Daniel's plan for 2025, that is very, very obvious that that's what they're thinking. Checo has done his time. He helped Max get his world title and he's helped Red Bull get their constructors. He served his purpose. Now he can go and Daniel can get back in where he is much more popular and he's a lot more gregarious on social media where Checo is a little bit mm, awkward. Will Daniel get more than one year at Red Bull? Well, it's hard to say. No other years were actually stated. So this could be just like a stopgap. So Alpha Tauri, Daniel gets one year and then 2025, Daniel gets a year there and then they'll see what happens after that. But that could easily change, much like how the goalpost for Nick DeVries' survival kept changing every five minutes. But I really find Daniel's change in his attitude towards getting back into Formula One really interesting. He knows the Red Bull circus inside and out, so if he gets a sniff that Christian Horner is serious about his plans for Red Bull in 2025, then of course he'll do whatever it takes to get there. Daniel was really reticent about coming back to the grid in 2023 for a subpar team, including Alpha Tauri, who were second to last last year. That's why kind of Pierre Gasly left, because 
it wasn't really looking good for Alvatari. But some things changed for Daniel, which also means other things could change and it could go disastrously wrong. All of this is also Horner's way of justifying Daniel's sudden call up to Alvatari, trying to actually explain what's going on here, trying to make Red Bull out to be a team that is not so harsh. They're just making rash, logical decisions. They're only trying to do what's best for the team itself. They're not being cruel, no. No. Maybe Daniel's influence and positive attitude might be enough to get Alpha Tauri off the bottom of the constructors table, push Alpha Romeo down there, who at the moment themselves seem to be in a state of flux as they transition from Sauber to Audi. So Alpha Tauri, get back to ninth place perhaps, try and match what they did last year, get Daniel's smile across the team. That might be a boosting influence in of itself to try and make sure that you don't have a Red Bull sandwich where they top the table and then bottom the table. I'm really worried about Daniel Ricciardo being made out to be a bit of a fool if he does not score points on debut because the media are very impatient and if he does not score points and he's not close to scoring points, they are going to turn on him immensely and then say to Red Bull, what on earth were you doing bringing him back? Of course, some drivers do take a while to warm up and we really should be patient with them, including rookies. He's not been driving for seven months, so you should give him a little bit of time to warm up and get reacquainted with this new team, right? Right? Well, what about Nico Hülkenberg, eh? Remember back in Silverstone 2020? He was actually doing pundit work for German TV. He then got the call up to Racing Point to help out, be a super sub. Then he got P3 in qualifying and he did really well in the race, immediately. And that came from Nico Hülkenberg. So Daniel Ricciardo, in that light, surely he'd do better than that. Now, of course, the Racing Point was the third fastest car in that year. I don't want to get into the rest of that. but. Yeah, people will be thinking, oh, surely Daniel can score one point at least. The media will be baying for blood if he doesn't. And I bet the next couple of races are going to be really hard for Daniel's psyche. And this is this is another reason why I think they should have waited for the summer break, because all we're going to get is Daniel being a bit subpar to what the media is expecting. And then we're going to have a summer break. Four weeks, no, no, six weeks, actually, of wondering about whether it was the right call for them to call up Daniel so soon. Oh, maybe all of that tire testing wasn't really substantial enough. Maybe they pulled another Nick DeVries again. Oh dear. You see, it's going to be a lot of speculation of that summer break, whereas if they waited till Zandvoort and then did it, okay, if Daniel didn't do that great, then he's got another race to actually step up again. There'll be less pressure and less speculation where nothing gets done. Everything shuts down with those teams. You can't work the simulator. You can't make upgrades. You really can't do all that much. So Daniel won't have much chance to get in that Alpha Tari simulator and try and learn what he's already actually experienced on the track. Now, I know you've been waiting patiently. I want to talk about briefly what I was mentioning about Kimi Raikkonen at the beginning. In 2014, before Daniel Ricciardo got the call up to Red Bull, in 2013, they were actually considering the likes of Kimi Raikkonen, him being the favourite to join Sebastian Vettel in 2014 for Red Bull for the longest time. They even tested out Carlos Sainz. Now that was really interesting in of itself, and how Kimi Raikkonen might have actually emulated the 2015 Ferrari lineup one year earlier at a different team. Now, Kimi Raikkonen at Red Bull. Wow, the Red Bull was better than that Ferrari of that year, so... Mm. But what about Ferrari? Who would they have had partnering Vettel? Well, maybe uh, Esteban Gutierrez, their reserve driver? Or would Vettel have actually left Red Bull and gone to Ferrari? Because, you know, partnering Raikkonen, I think Vettel would have had less pressure, so we might have had Vettel going on for even longer. Then we might have had Vettel and Verstappen together. <gasps> oh, oh, spicy. Back to the main topic. Here are three paths I think could occur for the AlphaTauri Red Bull mess. Now we've actually heard more from Christian Horner about the game plan. Okay, Daniel goes like the clappers. He is actually fast right at the gate, and they're able to do enough to get AlphaTauri above Alfa Romeo and the constructors. Then what? The success of one leads to the downfall of two. If Checo doesn't pull his socks up and he continues not getting into Q3, and if Daniel just continues to improve and improve in a really inferior car, which has been really, really tricky this season, that not even Yuki Tsunoda can score many points, and he's really tenacious, then it's just going to bring Checo into sharper and sharper relief. He could be toast sooner than expected in 2024. They might not care about the contract. They might just rip it up. And I think the party line is going to be something really interesting and a way to actually get Red Bull off the hook. Let me read you what I think would be a similar Christian Horner quote about the situation if it would happen. <laughs> oh, well, we did all we could. We tried to help Checo through his problems, but in the end, we can't be leaving points on the table, especially going to next year where our competitors will be more clued up with the regulations. Yeah, 
they're going on the idea that all of this mess is nothing to do with the car. It's all to do with Checo being too hard on himself. All of this being self-inflicted. He is doing this to himself and therefore he's bringing down the team. And this team, the top team, can't be doing with any of that, even though they are actually leading the constructors without Checo's points. That's how I think they will spin this if it all goes awry for Checo. Not to mention Yuki. Yuki's actually been saying recently he's not looking anywhere else for a race seat. He seems quite content the where he is and that everything will work out for him. Well, if Daniel blitzes him and he does get the call up to Red Bull either next year or the year after that, Yuki better get himself comfortable with AlphaTauri or whatever it's going to be called because that's what happened to Gasly. He's going to be there for the rest of his career until he decides that he's had enough and he goes elsewhere. Maybe Honda will give him the call up at Aston. They'll call up Daniel next year to have a much steadier campaign in case the rest of the grid has improved. All right, Daniel performs all right, but all of this actually has the desired effect for Checo and he improves mightily for the rest of the season, constantly getting podiums, constantly being in the top five, or maybe even getting one twos and a win for himself. Daniel will most likely stay at Alfa Tauri for 2024, but I feel like Checo will probably leave the year after that anyway because his contract will be up and they won't look to extend it. But they'll use this period in 2024 for Daniel to actually get a proper benchmark in comparison to Checo, because that Alfa Tauri car is going to be much more like the Red Bull RB20 than it is for the RB19, because everyone's talking about Red Bull going back to the old Toro Rosso model for the second team. So the car is going to be a much more identical beast in comparison to what the Red Bull team are actually cooking up. Horner can get a better inkling about what Daniel is doing at the moment and whether he would actually be a good fit for the top team or whether or not he should stay there or maybe that might be his time up and they should really be getting on with their junior driver program, something they've been forgetting lately. Then there's the possibility of Daniel absolutely cratering and that Yuki is able to run rings around him and actually show he's got the measure of that car much more so than Daniel. It all turns into an absolute embarrassment for Red Bull that they put this faith in one driver yet again and they underdelivered. Nick De Vries all over again but this time with the most popular driver on the grid aside from Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen. Yuki would be coming up roses. He would get the call in 2025 once Checo has actually fulfilled his contract to partner Max Verstappen. He will be so tenacious against Max Verstappen, willing to prove himself and it makes it very possible for Japan to get its first ever Formula 1 victory. Seriously, they've never won a race before. The closest they've ever got are podiums with Kamui Kobayashi and Takuma Sato. Instantly, if Yuki Tsunoda wins, he will go down in Japanese Formula 1 history. An F1 win in Japan is effectively the holy grail. And if Daniel does crater, then he's not getting in that Red Bull seat, that's for darn sure. And he'll probably just slink off into retirement or stay at Alpha Tauri until he decides to call it quits. Here's another prepared Horner statement. It'll be like, look, we gave Daniel a chance and a proper way to call time on his career with the family he loves and gave him his big break into Formula 1. It's the way he would have wanted. Hmm you know he would say that. In any case, I think that all of this is a big PR move to try and get people to stop talking about Daniel Ricciardo replacing Checo sooner than people would be thinking. But you know what? This actually just made me think about that even more. Just, just don't talk about it. The more you talk about something, the more people are going to be speculating. And Christian, we trust your driver guesstimations about as much as you can throw up a good barbecue, which, oh, you actually can. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go now.